Hello. I want to play a little bit with n particles and especially with the particle collision event editor. It basically does things with particles when they collide with other particles or objects. Actually, this is a very crucial thing when you simulate rain in Maya or in 3D computer animation because you have the uh, streaks of uh, rain falling down from the sky and once they hit the ground they split into other particles. That's an event basically and there are lots of tutorial out there creating rain in Maya where they use that split option here uh, but it's mo much more general and, uh, and we can use it in many contexts plus when you try to render rain in Maya, lovely rain which you create with n particles, you run into problems and I don't want to deal with those problems until they are solved. For example, the Autodesk Knowledge Network for Maya tells you important notes about rendering n particles with a Maya software renderer. Well, let's render them in with Arnold then. Oh, Maya to Arnold supports Maya particles and n particles. However, there are some current limitations. Tube, numeric, and streak, and streak is what the rain is, are not supported. This needs to be fixed. Okay, uh, n particles. Let's create an emitter and just for fun use the option box. The emitter type is currently omnidirectional. So it will be a point in the center of the scene shooting particles in all directions and at the same time creating a gravitation node which pulls them down. Uh, interesting but we'll do something else here. We choose the volume instead of omni. So we expel the particles from a volume. And down here we can choose what kind of volume we want. The default is a cube but we can also use a cone, for example. And that's an interesting uh, parameter which you have to select at uh, creation time. You, you cannot do it later, I think. Um, die on emission volume exit. Let's try this and apply it. We need to scale it up quite a bit in order to see the effect. So here are the particles, and the particles die when they reach the surface. So that's uh, something which you might need in oh, one or other context. Let's create a new scene and do the same process. N particles, create emitter with the option box, and we create a volume but let's not die, make the particles die here. Uh, the volume can be anything, really. Okay, so that's our emitter. Move it up. First thing, uh, you want them to be slower. There are several ways to do it. The basic way is nucleus, and the nucleus is the node for the simulation for the dynamics. And here you have the gravity and just reduce it to 4 from 9 to 4. So the particles will fall much slower. Second thing, we want to see the particles properly, not just these points. How do we do that? Well, we select them. That's the box where the particles are in. You can select them here in the outliner as well. And here you have the attribute editor of the end particle shape, that thing here. And uh, for example, from the bottom, from the top to the bottom, the lifespan, they currently live forever. Let's make them die after, say, four seconds. So Maya doesn't have to calculate everything once the particles are very low down. So that's done. Um, the particle size will be critical in a second, and let's open it for now. The default seems to be 0 0.2. Let's see. Uh, further down, further down, further down, we have shading. And under shading, I think it's hidden too deeply, are the points. That's the points we currently see. When you want to render rain or create rain, you use a streak. That's what does not render in Arnold. See, long streaks here. 
um, very nice actually. Uh, we choose spheres and they are currently a little bit big so we jump back up here. Actually, actually they're not too big. Uh, let's leave them like this. Where are the colors? Well, down here. Currently white. Click on the icon here and make them purple. So the starting particles are purple. And they fall down and they die after four seconds. And uh, we need to increase the playback range in order to see a little bit more of what's going on. Well, we make it a little bit more interesting by creating an object where they fall into, like a like a half pipe. I go to curves surfaces and create a sphere. And uh, in the make NURBS sphere settings here in the attribute editor, you can change the start and end sweep, make them open open them a bit like this, like one hundred. 80 degrees sort of and then you rotate the sphere like this scale it flatter like this so the particles will be emitted from up here and then they fall into this half thing and they have to feel that half thing and I tell you right now a NURP surface is not taking part in the N system, N constraint, N hair, N cloth, etc. We have to convert them to polygons. That's easy. Modify, convert, NURBS to polygons. And since we have quads here, more or less, uh, with four corners, let's create quads. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I think that's a matter of the aesthetics and beauty. Uh, doesn't look elegant, uh, looks looked much more elegant as an NURBS object, but uh, we don't really want to care about it. So the particles fall down and they definitely fall through that uh, surface because it's not felt by the particles. There are two ways to define it as a collision object. One is N particles and make collide. In order to use this command you need to pick the particle and then the collision object. The other way to do it, and I think this is a bit more lean and practical, is under N cloth. Why under N cloth? Because N cloth, N hair, N constraint, they all use the same dynamic system that nucleus here. Here we have the create passive collider. We just need to select the half sphere down there and create a passive collider, and we're done. So the animation looks like this now. And you see they fall down and then they die after four seconds. What we'll do now is we'll make them die in another way. And this is why we select them here or there. And now we go to N particles and particle collision event editor. A particle collision event is when a particle collides with something, something else should happen. Let's open this editor. Here you can type in scripts if you like and if you can, but down here on which collision do you want the event to happen? Let's make them happen on all collisions. Any particle which collides with other particles or with that surface will create that event in the event by the event editor. Well, what should it do? emit a new particle. How many? Let's say three. So per event three new particles are being created. Here is the spread. Well, let's make them spread a little bit less and create event. We're done. Let's close that window and let's check out what happens. We have a drastic new set of objects here in the scene and they are called particle 2. Let's give them another shape instead of points, spheres and make them smaller instead of 0 0.02 0 0.015 
and let's give them another color, namely a blue. So what is happening now? The purple particles, each of them creates three blue ones. So after very little time, we have created so many particles. We select the particle number two and go to end particles and do the same thing again, particle collision event editor. And this time we split the particles, each particle which collides with another particle or with that ground surface should split into other particles. Well, for example, into three uh, with a quite a big spread here. And the original particle dies. Yeah. Create event. Now we have a third generation of particles and Maya will slow down a, quite a bit. The third generation are the little dots here. Same procedure as before. We go up here, change points to spheres, change the radius from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1, so they're the smallest. Could give them a random size, of course, and make them not white, but maybe a very bright yellow, like this. So that's the particle mess I'm currently having. <laughs> Now one thing I want to do in order to ease that simulation a little bit is go to the first emitter here, the emitter of the purple particles. And here I have the particle emitters, it's 100 per second. I reduce this drastically to 20 per second, so I have much less particles. And now is render time. When I render this with Arnold, I need a light, of course, and I use a SkyDome light just to check the rendering process. Arnold does render this all right, and it already looks quite nice. Let's map the color of the sky dome with a file texture and I choose one of my HDR images which I have here in my folder like uh, the cloud layers 2k that's that image here and I don't want the image to be seen in the rendering that's why I go back to the sky dome light shape and change the visibility for the camera from 1 to 0 so I won't see this background when I render it but the particles will pick up the surface colors which you see here now because we need to make things nice looking I create a plane rotate it, move it back and scale it up quite a bit so it covers the whole background. And I render it now, it's a grey background now. I get this effect. Looks like a ship now. Not enough light in the scene, that's why I go back to the sky dome and raise the intensity. It's currently set to 1, set it to 1.3 and render it again. Still not enough. But this looks much better looks a little bit like a ship. That's a random thing. I didn't plan that. Now there are two ways to raise the resolution. One is, because it's a bit small, such a beautiful 
picture. Um, there are two ways to raise the res resolution. One is in the render settings, right here. You can go to common and then further down you have the presets. The image size currently is set to 960 by 540. That's what you see here. You can uh, maintain the uh, the ratio of the uh, of width and ha uh, height uh, and well type in 2000 by well it's automatic it's 1100 now close so the image here will be rendered in a bigger size the other way to increase the resolution is here view test resolution is currently set to 100 you could have set it to 200 so it would have rendered the double size of the previous size anyway and finally let's go back to the render settings and go to the Arnold section where we could increase the resolution now in order to get less um, more, more anti-aliasing basically here we go down to motion blur and enable it so the rendering will start anew and the fast particles will be blurred much more and the slow particles and you see for each particle how fast they move because motion blur serves that purpose so i hope i inspired you a little bit to play with n particles don't get stuck creating or trying to create naturally realistically looking rain using n particles as i said they are fine preparing this but rendering is a drag bye bye